use of masks. Now, yesterday, there was a team that had come up with a 1,500 masks, and they decided to give it out to people across the city. So I'll be speaking to Stephen Jesse Kwa, who is on phone with us at the moment, the coordinator of Stop Coronavirus Ghana. Stephen, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Better. Thank How you so you much doing? for joining us. Can you hear me, Stephen? Yes, I can. All right, thank you for joining us on COVID-19 360. So first of all, give us details about the mask and, you know, why there was a need for the team to coordinate and share some masks to people across the city. Yeah, Bella, thanks to you uh, and thanks to your viewers and listeners as well. Yes, as you might know, we've been embarking on the Stop Coronavirus uh, uh, Ghana initiative just to also help promote the prevention education. And one of our, uh, our campaigns, we initiated to embark on in partnership with Jenny JQ, a fashion design house, to embark on a free local made mask against COVID-19. Okay. The whole idea, if you might note, notice recently certain countries around Europe, Asia, realized that uh, uh, usage of homemade masks was a factor that was helping to reduce infection, not necessarily as to protect people totally against the infection. But it's a way that could minimize the spread. You could know that there's a whole huge demand with the, with the clinical, the medical uh, masks right now by the frontline people to use. All right, and I think it was one of the essence why uh, maybe the WHO was advocating for people that are not infected to use those masks. But if you might know, recently by the, uh, uh, the Center for Control Disease in the U.S., yeah. had to change that rule because they've also realized that helping people to have those local made masks, homemade masks to be used, will help also sort of flatten the curve. So it was based on that reason that we said, okay, in Ghana we have these fabrics available. Why don't we put this together so that we can give this to the vulnerable who necessarily may not be able to afford to even buy the medical mask or be yeah. able to buy any mask to use. It's better to wear the local made mask made than even having okay. nothing at all. All right. right. So it was up to that reason why we you decided to. And yesterday, okay. Stephen, we, before we you even wear. move on, hold on. I, I'll come to what you noticed whilst you were sharing the mask. I just wanted to show people um, samples of the mask that your team came up with. And so this is what it looks like. And this is from the coalition um, of, of the, the, the team, Stop Coronavirus Ghana. Now, Stephen, I'm looking at a chart here that indicates which mask is, is right and which is not. Now, it says that the N95 mask filters the air when you inhale it and exhale it. So it protects the doctors from being contaminated. Now, there's another photo with cloth mask. And it says that some specialists consider these as totally inefficient. Now, others think it's better than nothing, but it's hard to assess the impermeability and sealing effect. I realized online as well that for most people who were doing their own masks, they were being advised to put in a HEPA filter because that way it tends to block, you know, the possibility of contracting the virus some way, somehow. Can you vouch that this mask that you have made, even though I do see that it's cloth, um, can do the same job as what we're all expecting? And does it have a HEPA filter in there as well? This does not have the helper filter. I know about the helper filter you are talking about. Yeah. Same scientists are uh, on record is there. Maybe I can share that information with you later. Just yesterday, we found out that about the helper that it is not even right for us to use that helper filter in the masses that are being produced. Okay, so why? Why so? Right? So there's a little bit issues with that. I mean, uh, Bella, to, to the national. What we are doing and what is happening, I cannot watch. What we are trying to do is to something that can help temporary. Okay. You know, it is better. The risk of, like, let's say, someone talking to someone at a distance and a doctor coming out. That mask that you have or the local mask that you have mm -hmm. could reduce the dropping somewhere, at least. Okay. All it matters is that people will be educated on how they could use this mask efficiently. That could help mitigate yeah. the risk currently right now. Because we don't have... Even the one for the front line, we don't have as many that we need to have mm. for the front line people for this battle. All right? So if okay. we need something to be improvised temporarily, that can help. But not to say that it is something that is actually going to solve the Stop problem. Stop it. Okay. Right? So we'll find a way that we'll find uh, solutions to solve uh, this uh, local map uh, made. Uh, Absolutely. Map made how it could be done. Absolutely. I know there's a lot of conversation going around this time around. With this, I okay. know that even 
the, the health uh, WHO is not really actually even endorsing this, but checks are still being done to see what would be the better way to produce to this produce, local mass, exactly. way to help uh, mitigate the risk that we're we, currently we having. We do appreciate so this gesture. Currently, it's not guaranteed. We appreciate we're this gesture. Stephen, can you hear me? We appreciate this gesture. Uh, quickly, I want you to touch on some of the things that you noticed whilst you were sharing the mask. Because you did mention to me um, off air that you realized the education didn't go down too well, especially with people um, who are not as educated. Tell me a bit about that before I wrap up. Yeah, so what we realized was that, you know, when we went to Medina, the, uh, the, uh, the Red Coast flat, uh, there's a little market and some slum area mm. around that side. And life was just normal with everybody over there. I mean, people clean, understand the matter of social distance, and it's like everything. And we realized as well that, you know, uh, there was a, commu uh, there's a community that we had, that we have a little of, like the Cario people, I mm. mean, they have to say the people from the last mile gathered around there, so many. And there was and uh, one of the public uh, PA systems, I think whether the municipality using that to talk about coronavirus. Okay. But you could see there was a language issue. The people demographic there don't speak tree directly, but they speak Aousa. Mm. All right, because when we go there, we have to get somebody who speaks Aousa to communicate with them. So in other sense, you could realize that the, the, the language barrier that was communicating to them in that language about coronavirus really was not getting down well to them. And yeah. them to as well, I'm not getting it well as to how this is very serious. Mm. So I think that moving forward, yeah, the government is doing a lot. We must appreciate what the government is doing. Absolutely. But however, if we can be able to start go down to the road and be able to sort of break the language bridge, to be able to sort of get the language they understand and explain things to them very, very well, so them to see the seriousness of this. Because it's just normal life like every other place. Yeah. I mean, the, the observation of what is happening at social distance, stay at home, it wasn't observed. The people were just doing things that's how we live our normal life. But we are in the times that things are very serious, we can't do things the way we do it every day. Okay, but that Stephen. was happening over there. So I believe that we have to intensify the education. Yeah, local the language education. All right. For those at the last mile to actually understand the, the, the okay. consequences about this pandemic and how they to protect themselves Stephen, and we've noted. with themselves and their families okay. and around them as well. All right. Thank you so much, Stephen, and your team as well for even supporting in the fight against coronavirus. I'm very grateful. And we also have received your mask and we'll make good use of it. Thank you so much. And so Stephen is the coordinator for the Stop Coronavirus campaign. And they made some face masks, about 1,500 of them, to give out. 